Is the Pocket Size Fluke 101 the best budget meter bang for your buck? Well, stay tuned, folks, because today I'm going to go over its many but simple features, even throw in a hidden feature that you may not even have heard of. Also, we'll truly discover if this was the best entry-level multimeter ever made. And the best part is you could pick up this multimeter for under $45 US. With that said, let's get into it. Okay, we've made it over to the workbench. And as you can see, we're reviewing the Fluke 101 pocket size entry level budget multimeter today. And Fluke has really done a great job in packing in the simple basic features that you're gonna need around your house for do-it-yourself repairs or even on the job as a second portable digital multimeter. And Fluke also did not skimp on the quality. They've always made quality meters that are durable, tough and accurate, and they did not skimp on the pocket-sized 101. As you can see, the Fluke 87V dwarfs the pocket-sized 101, but again, that does not mean that they skimped on quality or accuracy. As I'm about to demonstrate, this little powerful meter is worth every penny of that budget price. What you see here is what came in the box. You get your Fluke 101 meter, a very, very small, Fluke 101 instructional safety manual, your two leads, and of course your safety caps. Now there is a red one, but I seem to have misplaced it. Okay, the first setting I'll go over real quick is a commonly used voltage AC, that's the V with the wavy line. We'll throw it into the first click there. Now, I've already got it plugged into my power strip just for demonstrating. I am getting 122 0.4 volts AC. So that should be correct because this is an AC standard outlet. So right around 120 to 123 volts AC is what you're gonna get. Folks, if you've made it this far into the video, do me a huge favor, hit that subscription button below. It does something to the algorithm. It lets our videos push out and help so many more people. With that said, I truly appreciate it. And back to the video. As you can see, I broke out the Fluke 87V. Just to show you, there is a slight difference in voltage at 121.6 compared to the 122.3 and 4 on the Fluke 101. Now, this is a slight difference in voltage. This is probably a little bit more accurate, but for all intents and purposes of doing projects and small electrical work around your house, the 101 is going to do the job. But I just did want to show you there is a slight difference between the two models. So the next feature is the V with the straight and dotted line. That's the volts DC. I've got a brand new nine volt battery here. We'll throw our leads across the two terminals. And as you can see, we're right about 9.3 volts. Now this is a brand new battery, so that's good. Also with this meter, it does have a hold button. So you can hit that blue hold button there and it will, as you can see, hold your reading. So you don't have to write it down or remember. You can hit that hold button and it will hold that last reading that you just took on the display. It works for any of these settings that you want to use it on. All right, one more click up into the millivolt with the AC sign again. Now, I don't have anything to demonstrate this feature and you are probably never going to use this as your average homeowner on your entry level meter. It is a function that you could use if you've got a AC voltage source that's much less than one volt then you switch it into millivolts and you'll get a much more accurate reading on your display in the millivolt setting. So but I'll flip up into the next one, which is your omega sign there or your ohms symbol. So this setting here is gonna be for resistance and you can see it does have an orange audio symbol there and an orange diode symbol there. So that means if we're to hit our orange select button here, it will move into the audible continuity as well as our diode. That's the arrow with the line. Okay, and for the omega resistance setting right there, I'm gonna demonstrate on this simple 1000 ohm resistor. You just place a lead, doesn't matter which one, across both sides of your resistor. And as you can see, I've got about a thousand, 1.005K ohms. So that's about 1000 ohms on this resistor. Now we'll pop it into the continuity. This is the audible continuity setting. If you've turned that on, you're gonna hear the beep. And you'll also see the resistance of the circuit. 
So this is simply a way to check to make sure you've got no breaks in the path of your circuit. If you did have a break, you wouldn't hear the audible and you'll get the overload symbol on your display. But if you've got a solid path there, you're gonna get close to zero ohms and also you'll hear that audible continuity beep. Now, another thing to check on meters is how quick they latch on continuity. So it's not perfect, but it's pretty close for a $42 meter. That's pretty dang good. Okay, and one more push on the select button there in that same setting on the dial. We're now in diode, which is the arrow with the line. So diodes are most commonly going to be your LEDs. Now there are plenty of different types of diodes, but for this simple example, I'll show you how to measure a diode here with my red LED, if I can hold on to it. Okay, so I'll put the red on the longer positive side of the diode and then the black on the negative side. We're not reading anything. This may be a bad diode. Let's get another one. Okay, we'll try that again with a new diode. Red on the longer positive side, black on the shorter, and there you have it. Okay, so I had a bad diode, and that's how you can actually check your LEDs very quickly in this diode mode. As you can see, we found a bad one. Now this is a good one, and we're reading that forward bias voltage of about 1.73 on a light emitting diode. Now that's on a red. They're all a little bit different. And actually, if the lights were off, you would see that this is actually lighting up. It's also another way you can check to see if your LEDs are working. The meter produces a little voltage that runs through the LED and would actually light it up. It's very hard to see with all these lights on, but it is lit up right now. Okay, we'll pop it one more into the capacitance. Now that's the two lines with the curve and the straight line in the middle. And now for just a little bit more practicality, I will show you on this air conditioning run start capacitor. So you've got three terminals and most of the times you're gonna go between Herm and C. And we'll put our black on C, our red on Herm, and we're getting about 79.2 on our capacitance. Now this is rated for 80 or plus or minus 5% tolerance. So this one is still good, but it is getting low. Okay, we switched it into the last setting here on the meter, which is the Hertz and also the duty cycle percentage. Now, as a homeowner, you're most likely only gonna use the frequency Hertz setting, which is the default setting on that position. So what that is used for generally is you can test the frequency of your appliances. So if I were to plug in and you don't really even have to usually be plugged in, but I'll plug it into the power strip there. In, a, in the US, we usually get around 60 Hertz. Now that's the frequency of the sine wave of the AC voltage of a standard 120 outlet. So at 60 Hertz, I think in Europe it's 50 Hertz, but here in the US it's 60. So we know that this meter is very, very accurate and reading the frequency, which is really nice for a budget meter. Okay, and then to show you the last feature on the dial, we'll hit the orange button, puts it into the duty cycle. You'll notice there is a percentage there now on the display. We can plug back into our handy dandy power strip here, and we're getting about 49.9%. Now, duty cycle is the, it's the measure of the on time versus the off time of the AC sine wave. So right now it should be right around 50% because a balanced phased AC voltage sine wave should be on and off 50% of the time. And just to demonstrate again that the Fluke 101 is slightly different than the much more expensive Fluke 87. The Fluke 87 is reading 50 exactly. Now this meter should be reading 50 exactly, but it's 49.9 you can generalize that up to 50, round it up, whatever you wanna call it. And this is perfectly fine for the average homeowner. Again, you're most likely probably never even gonna use your duty cycle feature, but if you do, it's pretty dang close. Okay, folks, we're almost done, but I wanted to show you real quick a few hidden features that nearly every Fluke meter comes with, but you may not have ever heard of. Now, Fluke does something called power up features or power on features. This one only has really one useful feature. It has two, and I'll show you those now. So the first one is the hold button. So you would actually hold the hold button. 
and you would turn the meter on. Now it's gonna show you a, let's see if I can hold that up. It basically shows you a self-check of the display just to make sure you've got everything working. But when you release it, it's gonna show you the version number and then the model number. So let's do that one more time. Self-test, version number, model number. Okay, folks, the last hidden feature of this Fluke 101, it's another feature that all Flukes come with, but many people don't know about it. So I'm gonna show you that. And it's the orange button here. So if I'm gonna hold down the orange select button and then move it to any position on the dial, It'll say P off there. You saw it flash real quick. That does not mean pissed off. It means power off. And what that is, is it disabled the 30 minute self shutdown mode. So all fluke meters, if you leave them running without turning that power off or turning off the power off mode, it will self power down in 30 minutes. Now there may be some situations where you wanna leave it powered up longer than 30 minutes. So again, if you wanna do that, hold down the orange button, flip it on, you'll see that P off. It means it will stay on until you physically shut that dial off. Now, I recommend leaving P off enabled most times because that way you won't kill your battery if you forget to turn this dial off when you're done troubleshooting, which I've done a thousand times. All right, so that's it folks. As you can see, Fluke truly packed in the functions on this tiny pocket size entry level multimeter, but it's got the durability, the quality, and the accuracy of a fluke. It's a name brand you can trust. And this has had a price of a cheap budget meter at around 45 US dollars. This is truly the last multimeter that you'd need around your house for basic electrical work. Or you could carry this on the job as a second portable multimeter. Either way, fluke has really done the trick with this. I recommend picking it up. If you haven't done so already, click the link in the description and order one for yourself. Well worth every penny. Folks, if you enjoyed today's video, watch the next one right there. I picked it out just for you. I think you're going to love it. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel right there. It does something to the algorithm. Again, I don't know what, but it helps us push out our videos and help so many more people.